Hey guys and welcome to another... Hey, this doesn't feel right. Did, did someone change the lens? Walter! Ah, much better. Welcome to another very exciting tutorial. In this video I want to show you how to use the Mocha Pro plugin from Boris FX to work with and correct lens distortion. On top of that I will show you how to use the plugin to track a sci-fi display of Walter giving a very disapproving look into a distorted wide angle shot. And here's the kicker, we will be doing all of this inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. First off though, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. Boris FX are the creators of the widely used plugin collections Continuum and Sapphire, as well as the fantastic Academy Award winning planar tracker Mocha. If you are looking to buy Mocha or any other product from Boris FX, you can also use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word at checkout and you'll get an additional 15% off the final price. But now let's look at how we can use the Mocha Pro plugin within Adobe Premiere Pro to correct lens distortion and insert a sci-fi display into a moving wide angle shot. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a simple sequence set up here already with my clip dropped into it. And if I scrub through, you can see that this is a really simple clip that I took in Melbourne Central. And the notable thing about this shot is that I took it on a wide angle lens. So as the camera pans up, you can see all of this distortion happening on the outer edge of this shot. Now, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, simply jump over to surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you'll be able to download all of the files and follow along. In this tutorial, we're going to take the UI interface with Walter that you may remember from a tutorial on how to remove a person from a moving shot and insert it into this huge LCD screen that is hanging off the roof. However, because this clip was taken on a wide angle lens with quite a lot of distortion, you can see the LCD screen bend and distort, especially on the edges of the shot. Now with distorted very wide angle shots such as this one, there's usually two things that you may want to do. For one, you may simply want to get rid of the distortion itself and this particular shot is not actually too bad if you're thinking of something shot on for example a GoPro camera that's really distorted and you may simply want to get rid of that. But for this tutorial we're actually going to insert a new image into this LCD screen and with distorted footage such as this that can actually be quite problematic. Therefore in the VFX industry this is usually addressed by following an undistort distort workflow. How this works is that first the lens distortion is removed, then elements such as screen inserts or 3D objects are tracked and placed into the shot and finally the original lens distortion is reapplied to make sure that all of the newly added visual elements sit realistically in the scene. The cool thing is that Mocha Pro can deal with this lens distortion to allow you to insert elements correctly into such a shot and that is what I want to show you in this tutorial. But now I feel I've babbled on for long enough already so let's jump into the effects panel and search for the Mocha Pro plugin. Let's apply the plugin to our video layer and in the effects controls panel under the Mocha Pro effect you can launch Mocha by clicking on this big Mocha icon here. Here we are in Mocha Pro, let's just scrub through this to make sure everything came across properly. Yep, and that's exactly the clip that we had in Premiere Pro. And right now you may note that I'm in the track panel. However, Mocha actually has a lot of other capabilities and therefore you have all of these other tabs here and the way Mocha is meant to work is you're supposed to work from left through to the right. So first you import and configure your clip, then you calibrate your lens, which is what we're going to be doing. Then you do all of the tracking, you can apply adjustments to that track and then you can do camera solves, insert elements, remove elements or stabilize your footage. For this particular shot, because I do want to insert a new screen into this LCD hanging off the roof and because it is a really wide angle shot with quite a lot of distortion, especially here at the bottom you can see how the screen's kind of warped a little bit and as you kind of pan up you can see that these lines aren't actually straight, they're kind of all bent inwards and over on the right hand side all of these lines that should be straight aren't actually straight, they're kind of all warped towards the edges due to the wide angle of the lens. So the very first thing I want to do before I do any tracking at all is actually calibrate my lens. For that, not surprisingly, let's come into the lens module and in here you can now calibrate your lens so Mocha will essentially derive and figure out the distortion of the lens from the shot itself. In order to do that, let's find a frame where the distortion is quite obvious. So maybe towards the end here, I can see the lines on the LCD screen are definitely bent and here on the roof it's kind of 
you know, it's almost like a little bowl shape. It's definitely a lot of distortion in this particular frame. And then in the lens module, under calibration lines, you have these two buttons and the top one actually says locate lines. It's a little bit cut off because of the configuration of my display. Let's simply click locate lines. And that looks pretty funky. What Mocha has done, it has looked at this frame and tried to identify all of the lines in the shot that it thinks should be straight. Now, because this footage was shot on a wide angle lens with quite a lot of distortion, a lot of the lines aren't actually straight and therefore they're broken up into line segments. So for example, here on the roof of this building, you can see that some of these should be straight lines, but they're kind of broken up into line segments. And we now need to go through the shot and tell Mocha which of these lines are continuous and should continually be straight. In order to do that, let's press Z, click and drag up to go zoom in a little bit. And let's look on the left side of this LCD screen here. And you can see there's a segment here, line segment here and a line segment here, but they're actually all the same line. However, due to the distortion, it didn't look straight to Mocha. And so they're kind of broken up into these segments and we now need to connect them back up together. For that, in the lens tab, Underneath the locate lines button, there's this button for new line and the shortcut key for that is N and we will be using that quite a bit. So just remember that N is new line. Let's press this button and let's click on this first line segment up here on the top left hand side of this LCD screen. Then let's click the second segment and the third segment. And you can see that Mocha is connecting these together and it fills them in with this green line in the middle. So now we're telling Mocha that this is one straight line. Now we wanted to find a lot of lines, both horizontal and vertical all over the shot so that we're giving Mocha a lot of information to derive the calibration of this lens. So let's zoom back in and let's take the right side of this LCD screen. Make sure you press N for new line, otherwise you're going to continue this particular one. And again, let's just select these segments here on the right side of this LCD screen. Let's press N to define a new line. Let's pick the one at the bottom that's already nice and straight, press N. Let's connect these two pieces as well. And you now need to repeat this process all over your shot and connect all of the line pieces that define a straight line. If you are accidentally clicking on the wrong line, you can simply click it again to unselect it and always remember to press N to define a new line. And I'm now really just going over my entire shot and connecting all of the pieces together that I know are straight lines in this shot. Obviously, I am going to speed this footage up just so that you don't have to watch me click about a hundred something times throughout this tutorial. Just be careful on the left side here. All of these features are actually curved and you don't want to accidentally connect something up that isn't actually straight. Otherwise, it can really throw Mocha off. Also, if you do need more detailed line segments to connect up, in the lens module, you can bring down this minimum line length here. This will cause Mocha to display more smaller line fragments for you to join up, like this really nice long line down the left side of this tower right here. And then I'll just continue to speed this up for you. Cool, let's check this out and jack up this minimum line length. And it's not as many lines as I would have liked, especially on the left hand side. It was a bit sparse because everything is kind of rounded and bent. But on the right hand side, I think I've got a fairly good coverage of vertical and horizontal lines across most of the features. And now in the lens tab under calibrate, you've got this little drop down here and there's a number of different options for your lens calibration. You can calibrate for a one parameter distortion, which is your typical wide angle lens, which is either a barrel shape or a pin cushion distortion. You can also use a two parameter distortion model, which can be useful for older, sometimes slightly irregular lenses. And then you got options for one parameter inverse, anamorphic lenses, and you can use a distortion map. And this is actually pretty cool. Mocha Pro can export and import distortion maps, which are texture files that represent the distortion of your lens. You can build up a library of these distortion maps for your lenses and then use them really easily in programs such as Fusion or Nuke or in Mocha to calibrate your lens. But for this tutorial, we've got a simple wide angle shot here. So I will go with a one parameter distortion. Then simply hit calibrate. Hmm, now that doesn't seem to have actually done anything other than populate this K1 value here. However, if you come up to the tool panel and enable the planar grid, you can see that this grid now represents the distortion of your lens. And you can see it's quite a bit of a distorted lens for this wide angle. And in order to see what this would actually look like undistorted while still in the lens module, under the preview panel, you'll find this little gear icon. If you press this icon, you'll simply render out the current frame. And this is now our undistorted image. On the top left hand side of the preview panel, you can switch back to your selected layer. So that's with the distortion. And this is simply the undistorted shot. 
before we jump back to Premiere Pro, let me show you two cool things. For one, in the lens module, you can obviously export your calculated lens data. You can export the data as a distortion map, which is that texture that encodes the distortion data. You can also export the data as Imagineer Lens Data, which is a simple XML format. Or you can export to Mocha Lens for After Effects. This is a plugin that is available within After Effects that allows you to distort or undistort any of the layers in your composition to perfectly match your lens. Now, if you don't already have a pre-calculated distortion map for your lens and you took a shot of the jungle, you may not be left with any frame to use to actually calibrate your lens within Mocha. Fortunately, Mocha Pro actually lets you use a calibration clip that is different from the actual clip that you may have within Premiere Pro. So you can take another shot that has a lot of straight lines, like the one that we have here, or even a shot of a top-down grid, then calibrate your lens from that and then use that to undistort the footage of your jungle. But for now, make sure you save your data and let's close out Mocha Pro. Back in Premiere Pro, still with our heavily distorted shot, I can now apply this calibration data to undistort or distort my footage. In order to do that, in the Mocha Pro plugin, let's simply expand the module renders. Let's change the module from insert composite over to undistort and simply enable this little checkbox to render out the current module. And Mocha Pro has now applied that lens data that we've calibrated to undistort this shot. Let's take this one step further and actually use this calibrated lens data to insert a UI element of Walter into this distorted screen. First off, let's disable the module render because I actually do want to use this distorted wide angle shot just to show you that Mocha kind of internally already applies this whole undistort distort workflow to let you insert elements into a distorted wide angle shot. And now what we need to do, we obviously need to track the screen so that we can actually do our insert. For that, let's fire up Mocha. Let's make sure we're in the track tab. Let's find a frame where the screen we want to insert into is nice and clear. So probably right about there looks good. And if you enable the planar grid again, you can see that Mocha still has the calibration from our lens embedded in it. And it's actually going to use this information for the purpose of tracking. Let's disable the planar grid again. Let's grab the expand tool and draw a shape around the screen that we want to track. Sharpen out the corner points by selecting all of them and dragging the blue handles out. And I want to make sure that I include a few pixels around the outside of the screen so Mocha can grab on a little bit easier. Also, if you are new to tracking in Mocha, I've got a detailed tutorial on my channel that I'm going to link you down in the video description. So check that out if you're new to the whole concept. Let's rename the layer to screen. Let me just scrub through and what I think I can see is here at the bottom here, I've got this text disappear. So I want to avoid including that in my mat itself. For that, I'm going to select the add X spine to layer tool. I'm going to draw a shape around this text down here. And what is going to happen because I've added the shape inside another shape in Mocha, if I enable my mats, I'm actually cutting that out of the layer. So Mocha is only going to track this white big area of the screen. Let's disable the mats again. In my track tab, make sure you increase the minimum percentage of pixels used. I usually like to jack this up to probably around 70 or 80, sometimes higher depending on the size of my shape. And let's also make sure we enable to track perspective. Then, just so that we can see what is going on, let's enable the surface tool as well as the planar grid. And let's align the surface to the exact edges of this screen. And the cool thing is that you can immediately see that the calibration of the lens and the distortion in the grid match the distortion on our screen. So this is going to make our insert sit really nicely in this distorted wide angle shot. With all of that set up, let's simply start tracking forward. And that looks like a really nice and solid track. Let's come to where we started and let's start tracking backward. Ugh. And right about here, as the LCD screen is starting to leave the shot at the top, I can see the surface and the grid kind of starting to drift off. So what I'm going to do is going to come to the last frame. Let's disable the surface and let me readjust the shape itself just a little bit. I'm just going to expand this a little bit as well. Just include a little bit on the outside of the screen to see I can get, get a little bit of a better track. And let's track backward and see how this works. Uh, towards the end, again, everything kind of goes out of whack. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of a dirty hack. So with my screen selected, let's select the Add X Spline to Layer tool. And because I can't find another surface that matches the one of the LCD screen, I'm going to use this little storefront here. So let's just select that particular storefront. It's going to add that to the shape. I just want to hold 
this bottom end of the surface in place until the screen is fully outside of the shot. So with that added, let's just start tracking backwards and just see if this hangs on a little bit better. Cool. Now it may not be perfect and you can see the grid bend just a little bit, but for the purpose of this insert, this should be working just fine. Now, in order to try this out with the screen selected, let's just come down to the layer properties and change this insert clip from none over to logo. So this is inserting the Mocha logo into the shot. And let's just check this out and see how this looks and if this holds up all right. And that's actually pretty good. However, now I love Mocha, but I really rather have Walter hovering over the crowd of people staring down at them. So let's change this insert clip property from logo over to insert layer. We're not going to see anything yet, but let's save our data and return to Premiere Pro. And now in the Mocha Pro effect, let's change this module from lens undistort over to insert cutout. And the insert layer, well, we don't have any clip for that in our sequence just yet. So let's come back to our project panel. And the clip that I've got prepared earlier is called Walter UI. So let's just drag this into our sequence. I want to trim this at the end. So this is just a little clip of Walter giving a rather disapproving stare. Let's disable the visibility on this layer because we don't actually need to see it. Let's reselect our Melbourne Central clip and the Mocha Pro effect. Let's just come down. And now let's change the insert layer from none over to video two, which is the layer that we've inserted this Walter UI on. Finally, let's simply enable the render checkbox. And now we have the Walter logo inserted into the screen. However, the rest of the shot is kind of gone. So what we can do, we can change the module from insert cutout to insert composite. So that's going to add the screen on top, but it doesn't give us much freedom because it bakes those two layers together. I can't now apply effects just to this layer alone. So what I might do is I'm actually going to hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard and drag up on this Melbourne Central MP4 clip to duplicate my video layer. Let's disable the top one for a second. Let's select the bottom one. And I'm actually going to disable the Mocha Pro plugin on that. So I'm just back to my base footage right here. Now with this top layer selected, let's enable the visibility. And let's change this over from insert composite to insert cutout. And now because I've separated my UI interface from my base footage, I can start applying effects just to this interface. Now I am going to go through this next part pretty quickly and you can obviously mix this up in any way you want to match your personal taste. Also, since I do have access to the entire BCC and Sapphire collections, I really want to show you a few of the included effects, but again, just use whatever makes sense to you. First, I want to match the brightness and color of the screen to match my footage a little bit better. So I will apply a BCC levels gamma effect to my Walter UI layer. I really want to jack up the output black and lower the input white to brighten my insert clip. And I think I'll increase the gamma by a fair bit as well just to match these clips up. Next, let's apply some glow to the screen. For this, I am going to use the S underscore glow effect from the Sapphire collection. In the effect settings, I'll jack up the glow with by quite a lot to get a really big and soft glow around the screen. And I will also lower the brightness so we can actually see the Walter UI through all of this glow. I think I will also bring up the output black and the BCC levels gamma effect just a little bit more. Yep, I think that looks pretty nice. Finally, let's add some lens flare to the screen to make it stand out and feel really intense and bright. And again, I'm going to use an effect from the Sapphire collection called S underscore lens flare auto track. This is a really cool effect that will automatically generate light flares for the bright parts of your layer. In the effect settings, let's launch the preset browser. This effect comes with a ton of really cool presets and the one I'm going to choose is this digital looking lens flare right here called JJ Track. Let's load up this preset and right out of the box that actually looks pretty cool. But let's jump into the effect settings and enable to track color to match the lens flare better to the color of the Walter UI. I will also bring down the brightness by quite a lot. I really want a slightly more subtle lens flare effect. Finally, let me drag the pivot point down towards the bottom right hand side of the screen insert to get these really nice diagonal lens flare elements right here. And now if we rewind and play back this sequence, we have a really cool UI element of Walter glowering over a bunch of people inserted into a distorted wide angle shot. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, maybe get access to my private Discord server, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.